Hi, I'm Brett, and today we're going to talk about the differences in the way the tensioners work on the EJ series engines. And to the left of me, we've got a brand new engine that we're building for a World Time Attack car. And to the right of me, we've got an engine that we're rebuilding for a client in a later model Subaru, circa around uh, 03 to 06. And you'll notice visually straight away some of the differences. But what we're going to do is in this video, I'm going to explain the features and benefits of some of the older model design, which can be incorporated into the newer engine, and some of the newer features in the newer engine that you can actually then put into your older engine as well, and how some of these parts are interchangeable and how they work, and some of the particular things on the bearings, what to look for. So um, make sure you stay tuned for that and check out our video at the end where we'll talk about some other helpful info as well. So the first important thing we want to make sure that we understand effectively how the timing belt works on an EJ series engine and you've got the crankshaft in the middle with a tooth um, drive which connects the belt to the variable cam or the camshafts on the left and the right engine so left and right heads and of course the whole assembly rotates but whilst it's also rotating it also drives the oil pump which is in behind the crankshaft here between the front of the block and it also drives the water pump now the water pump you'll notice then has the thermostat at the bottom and the rest of these parts here are idlers simply to locate the belt and keep a tension against the critical components, namely the, cam the toothed uh, parts on the camshaft and of course uh, the crankshaft drive at the front. So you'll notice on this particular engine, it's all fresh and new and this part in particular here, take a look at the way the tensioner is. This is the early model tensioner on the very model, early model Subaru EJ series engines and it's a piston design um, tensioner. So inside there um, is effectively a mechanical design to exert leverage on this uh, pulley here to tension the belt to keep the whole assembly tight. But in the early model design Subarus, they never had this idler because this particular idler was an idler that only came in the later remodel engine. So let's just go sideways and have a look at a later model engine and you'll notice that this idler exists, right? So just hold that thought and let's go back to this built engine and we'll talk about some of the other mechanical designs because also when we've updated this design with this older model tensioner, which we believe is better in this application, to mechanically fit it, we also wanted to make sure that we ran this idler because of the obvious benefits. Now to achieve that, uh, Roger Clark Motorsport have come up with a really trick uh, machined aluminium billet design bracket that bolts onto the block and takes the original Subaru tensioner, but it also allows the newer design Subaru idler to exert a little bit more tension on this belt when the engine is running at high RPM because you can see there's a bit of a dip in here which exerts the tension on the belt when the whole assembly is running. But of course, unless you've got this bracket, the early model design engines, if you've got a really old model Subaru with this originally fitted, this is the part that is now extra and was never originally fitted. Now you'll also notice um, some of the other small things and I'll just touch on it up the top here. These uh, bolts here, but also in particular this one here is, a, is the guide for the location of the um, belt. So when this is spinning fast, the, the belt has a tend to get a whip up and it moves around and this guide here is to intentionally make sure the belt doesn't jump off the teeth of the um, camshaft drive. And of course, um, you'll notice there's original factory one here on this particular engine which we've fitted. You can actually get aftermarket guides as well, but Subaru on some of the model later models have this guide originally fitted as well. And again, it's to make sure the belt doesn't come up and off the tooth drive of the crankshaft pulley. Now, we're also talking about the differences with the uh, idlers. And in a discussion thread on my YouTube channel, we've been talking about what's new and what's old. And what we want to talk about is some of these idlers have got single bearings in them, and some of them have got double bearings. Now, let's have a look at the newer model Subaru engine, which hasn't been rebuilt yet. It's got the newer model tensioner, which if you've just got a normal engine, these tensions are fine, but you can replace it with that kit that we spoke about earlier. But you'll notice it's got the updated idler here which Subaru fitted in the later models but you'll also notice that this particular engine has got what Subaru superseded it's got a, this idler down the bottom here has only got one bearing in it and if you move it you can see the bearings actually already failed because the load on the bearing with one single um, well the load on the idler with one single bearing inside there 
effectively wears the bearing out fast and then it starts failing. And what happens is as it starts to fail, the idler goes, um, no longer is mechanically straight with the alignment of the belt and it starts going like and loading down this way. So what happens is the belt gets an angle on it, it actually starts to want to try and walk off the rest of the assembly as this engine is, as the belt is spinning. Now, as you'll notice with this brand new engine that we've built, notice the difference in the change of the design of the bottom idler. It's a black idler, which is a genuine Subaru one, but you'll notice how the bearing sits a little bit further forward compared to this one. There's, this one's got a gap because the bearing is at the back. You'll notice that gap there. Whereas this one here, you'll notice there's no gap because it's a double row bearing which is proven to be more mechanically reliable. Subaru superseded that bearing with, the, with a newer model bearing as an update in the later model engines. And typically a manufacturer does that for a very good reason because they've learned that they have problems with those lower bearings. Now, of course, if you're getting an update done to your Subaru, this is the lower one that you wanna make sure that you use. The thing to be careful though, is a lot of the non-genuine Subaru timing belt kits include a single roller bearing idler as a replacement because they never updated or superseded their kits. So if you're doing a, a birthday on the front of your EJ series engine with all of these parts, then make sure that you've got the newer design bearing on the front of the engine. And you'll notice all of the others are all got double rod bearings. This one here is the same. So let's just now talk about the way the engine works from the mechanical side. You'll notice it's a really good opportunity to look at this early model EJ series engine before they went to variable camshaft. These are these originally factory standard were not adjustable. This is being a race engine, it's got um, adjustable um, exhaust and inlet um, cam pulleys now, so it can change the static timing um, when the engine um, is designed to run in the right operator. They can't change dynamically when the engine is running, but you can change it, advance and retard, retard the camshaft as per the spec of the cams that are fitted to the engine for the best performance. Now, Subaru then, on their first series of the variable cam controls. This one is a good example. It's got variable inlet cams and non-variable exhaust cams. These variable inlet cams are adjustable and controlled through the factory ECU, which is adjustable as part of the tune. So if you've got a tuner who knows how to get the best out of your engine and knows how to control the variable cam control, these features allow the engine to come on boost a lot earlier. And in a good, and with a good quality tune and a good tuner who knows what he's doing, you could probably bring the car on boost about 500 RPM earlier by adjusting the um, variable cam control in the uh, software update in the custom tune. And this is controlled by these valves on the top, which are oil pressure fed. And that is what advances and retards the camshaft pulley whilst the engine is running. So basically you get the best of both worlds. The later model engines then had variable um, cam pulleys on the exhaust which quad variable cam control or AVCS active variable cam system which is what Subaru call it. So in summary if you're looking for changing and updating your um, timing belt kit or um, just want to make sure it's in good condition you'll notice this uh, engine's got the uh, STI high performance belt um, the genuine factory belts actually fit that little bit better than some of the aftermarket belts and allows you to get the timing just absolutely spot on when we talk about the relationship between the location of the crankshaft and all of the cam pulleys, which is then dictated by the correct locating of the tooth belt. And you'll find if you use a non-genuine belt, you just can't quite get the timing in the right location. But of course, make sure you check out what we've spoken about for these, these different design idlers. And of course, if you want the best possible update, contact Roger Clark Motors. Well, I mean, here in Australia, we do sell them, but if you're overseas around the world, you can contact these guys in the UK. It's a very, very good kit in this application. Um, it's doing its job properly. But of course, if you're just doing a normal update, um, the important part we do with all of our jobs, when we're checking the timing belt, make sure that you check the idlers and make sure they're in good condition. So when you pull the belt off, you can spin these by hand, and if they're noisy, you know straight away to replace them. And of course, um, the tensioner, you need to look down inside here, the later model tension, is if there's any sign of hydraulic fluid coming out of that piston inside there, which is what exerts the tension on the tensioner, right inside there, um, then you need to replace that tensioner straight away. Um, and of course, if you've got time, 
you can pull the oil pump off and you can pull the water pump off and have a look at the back of it. But don't fall into the trap of assuming you need to replace the oil pump and the water pump. It's really unfortunate that some workshops say, oh, look, while it's all apart, let's just replace it. But I can tell you right now, if the engine has been reasonably looked after and it's had regular oil changes and the coolant's been looked after, the water pump and the oil pump in the Subaru EJ series engine is pretty reliable and you really probably find you don't have to replace them, even though you're going to, might be going to keep the car for some time. But make sure when the belt is refitted, check the alignment of those camshaft guides, and of course, make sure um, you get it done by someone who really knows what they're doing, because it's pretty ugly if you get it wrong, and it's also even more ugly if you wait and find out the belt breaks. So there you have it. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. I really hope this information helped you learn a little bit more about the timing belt options for your Subaru EJ Series engine. Remember, whether it's a 2-liter or the 2.5, the front end is relatively the same. A lot of the parts are interchangeable as well. And um, make sure you check out our website, mrttuned.com.au. If you're in Australia, contact us. We'd love to help you with a local tune wherever you are with our partners around Australia with our remote tuning options. But for now, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.